Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, we've been thinking about it here in the office. Well, we're out of the office today. We're off site, so there may be a few bangs and whistles going on around us. But I really wanted to go ahead and share what's going on and what's going to be happening in the next few months. We have developed a number of models, mostly leadership models, over the last few years, the last 20 years. And today we're going to start with the leadership attributes model. Now the foundation of almost all of these models is character. They're slightly different because their setting is a little bit different in terms of leadership and teamwork. But character comes first. Now, we love the idea of models because the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I'm a very visual person. I like to see the picture and then I can start thinking about it. So we have this leadership attributes model and we're going to talk about several attributes within that model. Today, that character one is at the bottom, bottom of that triangle. And it's the foundation because without that, people are not going to trust us if we don't have good character. Now, we all have character flaws. We make mistakes and we're going to talk about that as we go forward here. But I want you to think about, do you have standards set for yourself to do with character. There's a lot of things that can come up in our character. Well, we have put together a model, another model to go with this one, really. It's called the honor code. Now, in the POW camps, honor was a very important thing. Return with honor was our motto. We had the code of conduct from our government, the Military Code of Conduct, six articles, basically saying you're going to be faithful to your country, faithful to your teammates, and faithful to your leaders. And so that was so important for us. And that was what honor was about, doing, keeping our commitment, serving, doing our duty, and abiding by what was expectations were. Well, returning with honor was a big deal. So the honor code here we have seven articles in it. Number one, very simple, tell the truth even when it's difficult. Number four is be ethical. Number five is act responsibly and be accountable. Boy, we sure need that one in today's culture, don't we? Act responsibly and be accountable. Six is lead, lead your, live your values. And seven is be courageous. And that one's in the middle of this graphic. This is a one-page graphic you can download. We've had tens of thousands of people download this thing and we tell them use it make your own whatever you want to do but start here it's a good starting point the one in the middle there is be courageous and we're going to talk about more about that as we go down the road also now think about this you want to be a person of honor now in the old days we've had uh people who are in honorable roles and we still do so the word honor is used in court your honor. And we have people who have honorable roles in the government. They're called honorable so-and-so. But we're talking about character here. We're talking about honor of character. And so I want you to think about that and commit to it. And here are four things that will really help you as you go through that this year. Have you clarified your standards of values and ethics? character foundations. If not, we recommend that you start with our honor code, develop your own, whatever, adapt it, whatever you want to do, that'd be fine. Number two, does your work, does your walk match your talk? Does your walk match your talk? Ask yourself, are you truly committed to living by those standards? Now, that's not easy. Now, I coach myself every day. And I kind of debrief myself every day. Did I do anything dishonorably? Do I violate? Did I get close? And I coach myself on that. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Third, do you have someone you can talk to when you know you're getting close to an ethical issue and you know that you have strong emotions one way or the other? Sometimes you don't know if you can be objective. That's when I have some people that I talk to. Some are peers. Sometimes it's my wife, sometimes it's people who work for me, that I trust their judgment and I need to listen to it. And I, I'll make my own decision and own it, but I need to hear their perspective. 
So, and finally, number four, do you take ownership when you mess up? Can you be vulnerable and admit that you've messed up? Tell folks, I'm sorry, I did this, I made a mistake, I shouldn't have done that, and I promise not to do it again. That's being vulnerable. You gotta have a lot of confidence and humility to be vulnerable, but when you are, people trust you more. They believe in you as a real person, not somebody who's so insecure they gotta pretend that they never make a mistake. It's very important to do that. So take a look, consider our honor code, consider yours, but the main thing is work on your character and don't assume it's just because you're you that your character is always good. I tell my, my CPA every year when April 15th comes and the taxes being filed is get me as close to that line as you can, but don't get me over. So we're all close. Take care and God bless.